Welcome back guys. It is time to unleash the TOA equips to the overworld runescape. As we progress towards filling the PVM collection log, I will be testing new equips and figure out where they shine most and hopefully find some best in slot uses for them too. The first item I want to cover is the light bearer this video. It only makes sense because I got that draw first. This ring is, I would argue, the most powerful ring in the game because not only does it easily beat out the other rings in a lot of PVM situations, but it's also great for skilling too. If you are excited to see how the other TOA items are going to perform throughout RS, like the Fang and the Shadow, do let me know by liking this video and subbing so you do not miss out. Before we get deep into exploring just how good the Light Bearer is, let me quickly cover our TOA progress up to now. Ah, dang, it took a hit. No, it was so perfect. Alright. Oh my god, a purple. I'll take anything, anything. Not Shadow, though. No Shadow. Oh, another ward. Okay, there we go. I, I was missing out on them ward dupes, man. I'm only on my third one. Well, okay, 37.30. That's really fast. That's two and a half minutes. So, this 4.25 is definitely a lot faster. Oh shit, we got a purple. Race 3 luck is nutty. What do we get? <laughs> oh my god, dude. This is stupid. This is literally stupid, man. I don't even, like, I'm tired today, so like, I'm not as enthusiastic, but like, what? I can't believe I got another shadow. This is actually dumb. I don't think I'm gonna keep this one, to be honest. I don't think I'm gonna keep this one. Because I, I could do with some bond money. I could do with some bond money. But, uh, okay. We just got another staff. You know, three staffs. I, I don't know. Honestly, no idea what's going on here. Man, when, when I get lucky, I get really lucky. I guess. Like, holy... Gonna take a quick break and do some AFK virus for shards. But in the meantime, check out today's sponsor. Wireless technology is the future. That includes earbuds too. Let me introduce you to Raycon earbuds. They last eight hours before needing a recharge, easy Bluetooth pairing, and a comfortable fit. Personally, I use these for calls with friends and family as it's super convenient for when I'm eating downstairs. It's perfect for when I go running as well while listening to music or other physical activities. Raycon earbuds come with noise isolation mode for when you really wanna vibe to your music and awareness mode for when you want to hear what's going on around you during multitasking sessions. Their wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers comes with premium sound, comfortable fits, and up to 54 hours of playtime before charging at a much more affordable price than the competitors. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash rice and use code EARLYBF to get 20% off site-wide or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. My favorite bundle though is the All-Star Bundle. It's got the everyday earbuds and the fitness earbuds. Perfect for day-to-day -day multitasking and when you gotta go out to do some exercise. Yeah, this is definitely the play then. We are saving a lot of time with thralls, but it doesn't make the ray more challenging. So just adding the timer back gives me the 425 back and I also make the bosses a little less hard. And you, I save quite a few minutes, like like two to three minutes doing it this way. Wow, for a back to back. Ah, oh my God, I'm so confused. <laughs> like if you guys are watching this the whole time, you're going to be like, is this how it's supposed to be? No, it's not. I'm just stupid. I'm just stupidly lucky right now. Honestly, what, what we get here? Oh, my fourth mask. Okay, I deserve, I deserve a dupe. You know what I mean? I deserve a dupe. I just got a fourth mask. Wow. Yeah, damn, that's still so fast. Holy shit. Yeah, this is definitely the way to go. A lot faster than the original ones that I ran. Consistently, we've been getting like 36 minutes, 37, so. Nice, 200 expert Casey though. That's a good stopping point, right? Because we are not getting another purple. No way, back to back to back. I, I can't believe this, dude. We, we've gone back to back to back again. God. Good luck, Missouri top. Dude, that would be insane. That would be crazy. Ah, speaking of rings, there it is. I'm sorry that I stole your ring, but... 
That's actually stupid. Wow, eight rings. We're gonna get to ten rings soon at this point. Holy shit, that was so clean. I took no damage. Zero damage on that face. Hell yeah, that might have been my first time ever. That was sick. Yay, the back to back to back to back is over. <laughs> Redeem myself. This is insane. <laughs> the last like eight raids I've done, I've gotten like four purples. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm probably gonna. Oh, and a a a dupe, a dupe crystal. Cool. I've never gotten a dupe crystal before. All right, it is time to now go in depth into the light bearer portion of the video. The light bearer has no stats, but it has a special ability to double your special attack regeneration. There is no ring like this, which means it only takes two and a half minutes to get your special attack energy back to full instead of the usual five minutes. This application is absolutely insane because in a lot of PVM situations, special attacks of certain items truly makes a massive difference in how easy or quick you can do certain bosses. For example, certain special attack weapons like the Dragon Warhammer, Dragon Claws, Banner's God Sword, Volatile Staff, Elder Staff, and many others would benefit greatly from this. Also, it's useful for skilling as well since boosting with Dragon Tool special attacks like the Dragon Axe can be made easier with faster special regen. So how do you determine if you should use the Lightbearer over something like the Berserker Ring, especially in PVM? There are a few broad scenarios that are pretty safe bet that Lightbearer is the best choice. The scenario is when you do content like Chambers, where you have to use all three styles of combat pretty equally, since the Berserker Ring will only be useful a third of the time. Another scenario is if you are mainly ranging or maging. The reason why that is is because Archer's and Seer's Ring only gives accuracy. And it is better to maximize special attack weapons like the Blowpipe, the Zark Crossbow, the Eldritch, or the Volatile Staff, for example. If you are in a situation where you're pretty much mailing the whole time and you are always hitting, then it's better to stick to the Berserker Ring as the two max hits will easily outdo the extra special attack damage that you'll get from the use of the Light Bearer. So with that out of the way, it is time to show you some of the sick places that I've used the Light Bearer and found amazing results while working on the PVM collection log. The first boss I want to talk about is Dagonoth Kings with the Light Bearer because in whatever scenario you decide to do, whether it's Rex only like I am because I'm only needing the Rex pet or your Tribring, which is the normal way to do it, it fits the Light Bearer use perfectly. So which spec weapon does it pair with Amazing here? Well, the SGS, if you're on a budget, It'll heal your HP and per twice as often, because you get twice the specs, of course. But my personal favorite is the Elder Staff. It's amazing, because you get so much more per than the usual SGS. And healing is pretty easy if you have Blood Barrage, which you should anyways. So Eldritch is so nice here. I can basically stay here just using Eldritch for hours if I want. I brought Prayer Potions just in case, but I only use like maybe one Prayer Potion for like an hour with the light bearer eldritch combo so so good so the light bearer combo that i mentioned at dagonos is super applicable to a bunch of different places especially if you are doing magic exclusive setup like i am right now at kraken i am using the shadow as my main weapon but the eldritch with the light bearer once again is keeping my prayer going entirely on its own i don't even have to use any prayer potions once again, if you are doing a lot of melee air tasks, just stick with the B-Ring. The Light Bearer isn't really going to give you that edge unless you really need HP more than DPS just to stay longer before banking. Then okay, you can uh, use SGS Light Bearer as well over B-Ring. So we got Barrels next. Amazing. Use Light Bearer at Barrels 100%. Especially if you are going to use special attack weapons, you definitely should. Whether you're maging or meleeing, it doesn't matter. You know, the Claws, Volatile spec. You definitely want that light bear because it'll let you squeeze in an extra spec at least per barrel's run and combine it with death charge again and you can get like three to four specs a run in a short period of time oh yep look at that this is my four spec thanks to the spec ring beautiful beautiful this is awesome man light bear with the death charge is phenomenal absolutely love it so the next boss i want to talk about is sire 
So you're going to notice that I'm maging Sire, but that's just because I'm using the Shadow. So hint, hint, you're going to see that more in depth, me talking about the Shadow Sire in a future video. But the idea is if you are doing Sire and you are going to do a method where you just stay there the whole time. So using Blood Barrage to heal and not using the house to reset every kill, then the library is amazing because let's say you are doing melee only Sire, right? So your special type weapons like Dragon Claws or Warhammer. Well, with the Light Bearer, you get to use that more often, especially the Warhammer. If you do miss the spec, it'll help a lot. And I'm doing this Mage method here, so instead I'll be using a Volatile or an Elder spec. I prefer Eldritch, of course, so I can gain the prayer and never have to worry about prayer. So it works really well, Sire, if you're doing multi-kill trips. So I did Smoke Devils as well, and again, I'm using Magic, but that's not really too important. The most important thing is whether or not you're going to stay at this boss for a long period of time. In which case i am so if you're gonna stay at smoke devil without leaving and coming back like poh method then the light bear is also really freaking good because you can use again elder spec or something like a sarah god sword if you want to stay here longer and you're mailing so the next bosses i'm going to talk about are the god wars bosses so light bear in general i would say is overall best in slot at all five god wars bosses yes next included but let's quickly talk about sarah domain specifically so Sarah, a lot of people tend to just use the range method, and the range method is accessible for a lot of people. So if you want a couple blowpipe specs with light bearer or crossbow specs with light bearer, it's amazing. You'll definitely notice that your kills are smoother, your food supply is a lot bigger, or your prayer supply is a lot bigger if you're maging, like me with Eldritch at Sarah. It's so freaking nice. Massive quality of life. So for Bandos, the Light Bear applications is very similar to that of Serodomen. If you're going to range or mage Bandos, then basically you're just going to go with the Blowpipe Spec Assist, the Crossbow Spec Assist, or again the Eldritch Spec Assist if you're going mage. Now, there are people that probably still does melee, right? If you don't have access to some good range or mage gear, understandable. Light Bear is actually pretty good if you're learning mage Bandos, especially landing with those Warhammer Specs. I understand will massively help your kills so you get double the warhammer specs with the light bear so i won't cover zamrag and armadale much because to be honest with you i've already said everything i had to say about those four gauss bosses it's the same as sarah and bandos bring the light bear it's super recommended whatever spec weapon that you're probably going to use there you're going to want to use more of it now let's talk about next next is a much bigger deal much more complicated because you do have to do hybrid styles or range only style, right? So if you're range only, Zara crossbow specs, you're going to get twice as many, which is super big for making your next kills drastically quicker and easier. Save so much food when you can just re so many times. Now, if you're going with the melee setup, of course, you can use claws for double the amount with light bear. Or you can use something like a Zara's God Sword or Sarah God Sword to heal and stay alive longer if you have that over claws. So Light Bear is a massive upgrade at Next, guys. You will notice a crazy difference having this at Next. Definitely bring it. My favorite place to use Light Bear is definitely Chambers of Xerix because in the past, I remember all the times that missing my Warhammer spec on Tecton or Ohm Hand has significantly slowed down my rates. But with the Light Bear, you do have twice the amount of chances to land your Warhammer specs. And not just Warhammer specs, but things like Dragon Claws too. If you want to go for sweaty extra speed, Dragon Claws for like Fossil Crystals or Vanguards, you can get a few more of those in your raid with the Light Bear Ring on top. And some other people for challenge modes, like I've seen bring things like Zarya Crossbows. Hey, you can fit those in there twice as often too if you want. So the Light Bear is definitely the best ring for chambers nowadays i would say just because you're not laying all the time and you do rely on special tags a lot more i got it this time i got it oh we got it this time all right spec ring is so nice man you get so much spec back damn this spec ring is so good though you can spec twice per phase if you want and you'll still have basically 100 percent spec it's that crazy. Look at this. I spec twice last phase, and I can spec twice again. It's, it's actually insane. Wow, and they were both really good, too. All right, so for skilling, there's definitely a lot of applications with the spec ring because a lot of times 
you don't have 99 everything like me and you need a boost to do certain things like hey maybe you want to fish a bunch of anglerfish so if you have a drowned harpoon boost to get you there well good stuff with preserve and the library ring you'll get full spec bar in two and a half minutes this boost here right will last about four minutes or so because of preserve and yeah you'll have the spec back to do it again so you'll always be constantly boosted with this setup and yeah this applies to any fish anglers is just a good example because i feel like a lot of people need them but may not have the level or something on their irons next application is of course wood cutting same principle as what i just demonstrated with the drown harpoon with the drown x you gain a three wood cutting boost so really good for things like redwood if you're trying to do a goose grow or something like that mainly i guess just goose grow use but yeah same idea you should be able to replenish your spec again with the light bearer and preserve honestly you don't even need preserve but preserve just obviously makes things a bit more efficient so and lastly this is probably the most useful application just because uh, mainly for iron man if you're trying to make some amethyst darts but you're just low on that mining definitely want that light bearer with preserve combo Oof, you know mining I, I get it a lot of people don't like to train mining even if it's somewhat fk so it's not like you need the light bearer to do this method it's just with the light bearer you don't have to go to your house to reset your stats as often so it's more afk Yep, that's it for skilling. There's probably other skilling applications, uh, but these three should be like the predominant ones. All right, guys. So as you know, we have three staffs and there's really no point having a third staff. And yeah, just having a dupe is good enough just as a backup. I'd lose it somehow. So I'm going to just drop this over to my friend so he, she can give me the money. And uh, yeah, the money is mainly just for bonds and for paying splits or team rates and stuff so the staff ended up selling for around 1.6 bill but of course you have like that one percent tax so you didn't get all of it but yeah it was pretty much what i was expecting and i'm gonna drop some other stuff actually because it's been a while since i've dropped some triplets and more dupes uh things like the lands definitely dropped a lot of price i have triples for them so we're gonna just get rid of a lot of those items that I probably will drop a price and i don't need having all of those extra ones other than dupes and also i have a third mace and this thing drops so much over time i probably should have dropped this a long time ago would have gotten a lot more value but it's okay yeah we're gonna sell this mace as well because i have a third mace so i don't really care about triples and yeah the missouri mass i have like four of them so we're just gonna drop two of these they're probably gonna go down price since race three people are camping it like mad the entry uh bear tantry is just so low yeah and also we have a bunch of fangs too like yeah these things just get popped out all the time abyssal bludgeon as well and dragon hunter crossbow lost a lot of value because of the race 3 stuff taking over so yeah we have triples of things that we don't need so yep we're just gonna sell these now because they're almost very like almost certain that they're gonna drop in price so we are going to drop all of these and this should be about a bill value uh, uh yeah i price checked this is about a bill value so all right so we managed to get 964 mil after the tax it probably would be a bit more but i gave my friend the uncharged mass which is probably worth like 20 mil or something uh for helping me do this so yeah basically i managed to get 2.5 bill from dropping all those items oh yeah i got 13 reclaim tokens so i'm gonna reclaim this for free all right yeah sweet i got a bunch of these uh when they decided to let you get the pets back before the pet insurance update was a thing so i got 13 of these apparently i don't know how the math works but i can die uh, 12 more times i guess for those of you that are having trouble with the last phase of Akka, I recommend rotating your camera as up as you can so that way you can see it in a more grit-like pattern. And also on the third hit, immediately go middle so that way you have the least amount of steps needed to fight the boss again. So you can minimize time to dodge the balls. Oh, ah, okay. That was unlucky. 
I forgot the electricity thing next to the pillars can actually do damage too. What the hell is this? Okay, I'm gonna take a risk, bro. Holy shit, that was way too hard, dude. God damn. Okay, that's bullshit. I was literally gonna go. What? Look at the rock. Look at this. There was only one rock. Another one showed up. 